All right, I had to clear my throat, get to it for the, the Malcolm X one. Hopefully everything works well. Um, this is Are They Real or Are They Agents Malcolm X? Of course, after all these years, people still shit on Malcolm X's grave. The only people who aren't going to believe the truth are the psychopaths in the Nation of Islam and their coon affiliates who all work for the white man, I might add. Those are the only people who aren't going to buy the truth. Malcolm X was the truth. We all know the man's story. We all know how he was a criminal and a thug. And West Indian Archie was one of his uh, thug overseers, so to speak. Which I told you, I'm, I got a video coming up talking about crime in America attributed to blacks from Caribbean. After that, you're going to be like, hey, 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 just how bad are black Americans? You'll find out, but West Indian Archie, that's a good example right there to show that they come and they do crime. Anyways, I know some people, that's another thing too, before I get into that, before I forget, because a lot of people, they follow the white man's lead in saying that Malcolm X is uh, half white. Or was half white. Which is a bunch of craziness. When people say these things, they lie about Malcolm X. They're not saying it by mistake. It's on purpose to throw you off. They act like people can't read books. And don't have uh, vid access to videos. But this, they take orders from the white man. Because they assume that all black people aren't going to look into anything. Which a lot of people won't. Some people will. But they assume that most black people are idiots. So they can just say, hey, Malcolm X was a mulatto. <laughs> You're supposed to buy it. But these same people will say, hey, mulattoes are black. So what's the problem? <laughs> Farrakhan claims to be a mulatto. Nobody's trying to uh, repeat that. And that came out of his own mouth. So apparently calling Malcolm X a mulatto is a put down in a way to try and discredit the man. Obviously, he's not a mulatto. So, I mean, this is crazy. But we all know the man's history. If you watch the Malcolm X movie, see, that's the only thing. A lot of distorted uh, issues are in the, the uh, Malcolm X movie. And part of that had to do with um, cooperation from enemies of Malcolm X and Malcolm X's own family. Because his own family, they sided with uh, Elijah Muhammad. Now, as we know, there's a history of mental illness in Malcolm's family. Which we see that played out in his grandson, late grandson. So, you know, since they, they, they introduced Malcolm to the Nation of Islam. And um, they got him right. For all you know, maybe some of them could have been jealous that he rose further than they did. For all we know. But I know on video, there's a video of Malcolm's brother saying, I mean, this is not what you want to hear from a brother after he's just been dead, but been killed. He just said Malcolm X uh, went against Elijah, got what he's supposed to get, basically. I'm like, that's fucked up. But in the movie, they leave that out. I guess, I, I don't know, maybe because they didn't cooperate. I know Spike Lee was getting threatened from Farrakhan and a few others. That's why Farrakhan is not in the movie. That's why the Baines character is a, a composite character. He's supposed to be Farrakhan, Malcolm's brother, and some other people. That's what they do when, you know, they can't really talk about the actual real life person. They make up a composite character. So that's the only thing missing about that film and even back then they said they were going to do a Nation of Islam movie which I guess that never materialized <clears throat> and then you might run into some of the same problems because you can't do a Nation of Islam movie without talking about Malcolm X and now you can't do one without talking about Khalid Muhammad but, but if it's coming from the Nation of Islam you can bet it's all lies but anyways um, so that's what the Baines character was Farrakhan, if you notice, Louis X was not in the movie. And he definitely wasn't specifically named.
But so Mike Spike Lee, he had to do a lot of uh, creative thinking, which they movie makers do, and they put the depo- uh, composite character in, and um, they let him play out parts and roles that others played out in real life. And um, I think he also that guy was also uh, the uh, John Ali was a part of that composite character as well, because if you notice in the movie. Which is still a great movie. Still one of my favorite movies. When it first came out on Blu-ray, I bought that full price. Now I think you can get the damn thing for five bucks, which is crazy. Um, I can't tell you how many times I watched the movie. But um, they never show Malcolm X at his sister's house in Boston. I know some of you say, wait, he was there when he was with the girl. He was, but they didn't show her because if you read his... Uh, autobiography and some other sources she helped pay for his she paid for his trip to Mecca because he wasn't getting there otherwise so I understand in movies though you can't have too many actors you can go way above budget which that movie was and matter of fact Sarnetta he, he tried to say the movie flopped trying to tell you not to go see the shit again I mean it already did what it did I looked it up I don't remember it being a massive hit when it was out, but it made a profit. I think it cost $30 million to make, and I think about maybe $20 million maybe, I think, came from donations. And they made $48 million at the box office. So that's a, that's a decent profit for that type of movie, and given that length as well. But... It could you could call it a little bit poor performance because uh, during the Malcolm X movie, all the promotions you know they were pretty strong. You know, they had the Nike Malcolm X sneakers, the the Malcolm X clothes, the X symbol was everywhere, so the promotion was strong, and uh, everybody was loving Malcolm X again. And Farrakhan, the dude that helped take him out. He um, was getting very frustrated. You know, it's just the way white people are when they talk about Kennedy, when people say good things about Kennedy. And the people who were on that team to take Kennedy out, they don't like people talking about good things about him. You know? That's why they, they, they hate it. They say, oh, these Kennedys, they were this, they were that. You know, they kill him, then they want to shit on their grave, dig it up, shit again. They hated the fact that the people loved them. That's why they take them out. Because these guys weren't going along with these plans. So, Farrakhan got so damn frustrated that he, this is what criminals usually do. They let the cat out of the bag. That's how he made that speech which uh, Saad Netter purposely misquoted and tried to attribute it to Khalid Muhammad when he knows damn well Farrakhan said it. See, this is when they start lying on purpose. Because they don't want to look like they're trying to pick on Farrakhan. You gotta, some of these people play stupid when it's convenient. So I never play stupid most of the time because he is a goddamn idiot. But when it comes to protecting his masters, then he'll play stupid when, it's, when the time is right. As we know, Farrakhan in his famous speech from around the time the Malcolm X film was uh, coming out. He said, if a nation deals with a traitor like a nation deals with a traitor, then what the hell business is of it is of it is yours? Or just get that shit fucked up. <laughs> what the hell business is it of yours? That's what he says. He said it in anger. I mean, that's like me saying, "Man, this guy was fucking my woman. I had to kill him." Police, why are you at my motherfucking door? Because he fucked my woman. What the hell business is of it is yours? <laughs> In other words, he's saying we killed them. We committed murder. Why don't you all stop worrying about them? Same thing with Kennedy. We killed him. It was no conspiracy. Shut the fuck up, please. So he was pissed off. See, young Farrell doesn't remember the hysteria surrounding the, the, the Malcolm X film. That's why YouTube is a good resource if you remember the Spike Lee commercials, the Mars, Black Men, 
Malcolm X. You know, I remember seeing people rocking those Malcolm X uh, Nikes. I don't know how they are on a collective market, but, you know, I assume they must be big. But sometimes you got to actually be living the era sometimes just to see how things went, you know. But when all this Malcolm X was going on, you know, this is before my time. I'm hearing these guys talk about, but I was fascinated at the time because I'm like, damn, everybody's still alive. Except for Elijah Muhammad and... um. Malcolm X, of course, but practically everybody else was still alive. So, you know, that's pretty uh, fascinating. But Farrakhan was just fed up with the love that Malcolm X was getting. See, because I, like I said, he didn't help Spike Lee with the movie. Even though he said he would, but Spike Lee, matter of fact, you should be able to find interviews on YouTube, I guess, talking about it. If not, I think it... it uh, Spike Lee was talking about it on the uh, Blu-ray. Matter of fact, since I'm so interested in this, I think I might go watch the damn Blu-ray and listen to the commentary, which I hardly ever do on any goddamn DVD or Blu-ray. But, because to me, it's like watching the damn movie all over again. But <laughs> I think I might do it and learn something that I didn't know. But Farrakhan knew he had the guilt. That's why he didn't want to participate in the movie. Because he said, oh, the movie might make it look like Elijah Muhammad has something to do with it. What he really meant was it might make it look like he has something to do with it, which he did. I mean, come on. So, the fact that he didn't help out, he just didn't want to slip up. That's what it was. He didn't want to slip up, but he slipped up anyways. And it's all on the record. And Nation of Islam members, when you quote that line they say oh you're taking it out of context watch the whole speech well i watched the whole speech and <laughs> there's no such thing as taking things out of context when you watch the whole speech he said what he said and he said it in that manner if you understand what i'm saying he said it in the manner in which he said it <laughs> so and he meant what he said because he was involved in the killing that's why he meant what he said now people will say well how come Farrakhan wasn't arrested because he's a coon agent that's why he wasn't arrested that's why Elijah Muhammad wasn't arrested only the guys who got caught were arrested anyways let me try and take it from the top <clears throat> We all know how uh, Malcolm X, he came into the Nation of Islam through his brothers. His family was involved in it. And to me, Spike Lee would have been better off. I know it was hard to do, but I think he would have been better off hiring, you know, writing in characters that were his brothers and sisters, but just getting them, giving them different names, you know? Because now that, that movie now stands as a, more or less a historic record since a lot of people who were alive were in on the movie as consultants. But, um, and Shorty was alive at that time too. But, uh, and he has a book out too, by the way, in case you want to check out his angle. <laughs> um, but, um, with Malcolm X, we know how he came into the Nation of Islam. Like I said in the other video with Farrakhan, he had raggedy teeth, a shorter haircut. He looked like they just grabbed the guy off the streets or from a drug rehab, which they did, basically. <laughs> but once he got cleaned up, they got him some new teeth. Just like Farrakhan eventually got some new teeth. Because I guess he had to be presentable started building up you know he started the, the the newspaper he knew how to communicate he you know that's why in the spike lee movie you see the trial and error the empty seats in the mosque nobody paying attention to him he was learning from his mistakes he's learning how to better communicate with the people that's why spike lee showed al sharpton another coon agent acting like a church uh, preacher and the people were uh, standing around being attracted to him. So Malcolm X incorporated some of those uh, techniques and, and applied it to uh, the nation of Islam. And he attracted a lot of people. 
But see, he didn't lie. He didn't fluff too much. But I'll tell you what he did do. Yeah, I know this ain't a goddamn carriage in here. God damn. <laughs> Anyways, he didn't fluff. What he did, he um told it like it was. I listened to all of his speeches. I used to go to sleep to him. And <clears throat> from his first to his last, you would hear a recurring theme. You would hear Malcolm X making sure. See, it sounded good because it made it seem like he was dedicated, which he was, but at the same time, he was covering his ass. Because if, if he was talking about Nation of Islam folklore, he would always start with the Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us that. Thus and thus and thus. He even said that himself He after he was kicked out. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad, I was started off with the Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us thus and thus. That's what he would say. But the truth is, he would really say it because <laughs> a lot of this stuff was silly and I don't think he really believed that they were totally true because, you know, he did a lot of studying. But I think he said, okay, if this is what the man believes, I'm going to roll with it because, you know, it's getting a lot of black people in line, so I'm not going to go against it. Even a guy like me, I don't believe in lying, but <clears throat> I probably wouldn't rock the boat on that. Malcolm X never rocked the boat on that. So he was dedicated to it. He was dedicated to the cause 100%. That's why he was his greatest helper, Elijah's greatest helper. That's what Elijah said. But see, here's the problem. And we're going to, uh, I'm going to just jump to it. Because everything else is basically recounting this history. Let's just talk about prior, about a year prior to uh, Malcolm X coming out. <clears throat> With, to the press and the news. And that was in the movie too. Uh, Wallace Muhammad. Being a. Uh, gossip king. So to speak. He hated his father's teachings. I, I guess I got to watch more videos. I heard I seen enough of Wallace. Because he used to have public access shows. Every week. And I used to see him all the time. So. That's why I, you know, I was really used to him. He seemed like a likable guy, but <laughs> he was apparently, apparently pretty slick. Because obviously, if you tell somebody something about somebody's business, and then Malcolm X says, "You know what? I didn't really want to investigate because even if I wanted to believe it, I didn't want to believe it at the time because I, I'm down with Elijah Muhammad and the Nation of Islam." That's what Malcolm X said. So, you know, that's how it is in a lot of people. You know, if, if you're in a relationship and somebody comes to you and say, hey, hey, girl, Johnny cheating on you. You're going to be like, nah, I don't believe it. They just hating. You just don't like a, a happy relationship. That's what it is. You're trying to break it, break up a good thing. That's what most people's uh, first thoughts are. You hating. So you wouldn't really want to question it at that time. So you got to ask yourself, why would Wallace go to Malcolm X about it? What the fuck was Wallace expecting Malcolm X to do about this? Say, Elijah Muhammad, stop fucking these teenager, teenage girls. I mean, what, what was Wallace really expecting this guy to do? <clears throat> Should have gotten this water, but I'm in the car. <laughs> But um, what was he really expecting him to do? He's expecting some type of response from Malcolm X. And as we know, when we start trying to uh, elicit a response to, uh, for a particular reason and we don't get it, what do we do? We try again. Why do we keep trying again? Because we're trying to get a reaction. And we're trying to get the reaction from a particular person because Wallace himself could have gone and made the reaction himself and kept on repeating it to everybody, which I'm sure he probably repeated, repeated it to some other people. But he figured if it came through Malcolm, people respect it. 
and it would definitely get out. So we already know Wallace didn't like uh, the teachings of his father. And he was apparently actively trying to destroy it, which to me is crazy. But and again, I'm still trying to figure out why he hung around, even though that was his son. But he was a grown man, so he could have been on his own. So I don't know why he still hung around. <clears throat> but clearly, Wallace was trying to get a reaction out of Malcolm X. That's why a year later he tells him again. I'm sure he must have been telling him all through then. But uh, Malcolm X was like, I'm not concerned with that shit. Just like me. Things happen. I'm sure it happened in all of our lives. Uh, you know, I'm like, I'm not concerned with this. And then some other shit comes up. Like I said, when um, I was working that job and that white girl just came around talking this sex talk for no reason. I wasn't even thinking about her even while she was talking. I'm staring outside looking at things and thinking about what I'm going to do when I get off. And she just kept on talking about sex. And then when I ignored it, she waited, came back around, started talking shit again. And just to shut her up, I said, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, whatever. Just like that. The next thing I know, I get called in for sexual harassment. So, <laughs> this is what happened with Malcolm X. He was like, you know, whatever, man. I, I, I'm not concerned with that shit. And he comes back around again. Then it makes the newspapers or something like that. They, they, they sell him for paternity. Then... Malcolm X takes it to Elijah Muhammad. Well, takes it to the girls, tracks them down. To me, I don't. I, I, I'll be honest with you. I don't think it was really that important of a deal. And I'm not even a supporter of Elijah Muhammad, but I'm just saying. The only thing that was bad was the fact that they were teenage women. That's the problem. Whether him cheating on his wife, that's between him and his wife. You know, that's the way I look at that. Because I know people cheated on their wives. I, I don't even get into their business. Even though I know all the details, but I, I'm like, man, that's on them. I know the woman is being played, but if I told the woman, hey, your husband's cheating on you left and right, first thing she's going to say, oh, you just hating because you ain't got no good marriage like this. That's why I don't even bother. <laughs> you know? So, but clearly Wallace wanted to make sure this information was out there but he didn't want to be the one to put the information out there himself and to me the best one to put the information out there should have been him because he's Elijah's son people would have listened more people already knew he was hating on his father anyways but Malcolm X investigated this he got his positive responses which you know and they wanted the child support you know, it always comes down to the money. The hoes that Farrakhan brought on stage, if they were those exact women, um, they said that he, he treated them with respect. Well, I mean, that usually happens when you're trying to, uh, you know, have sex with women. You know, you, you usually treat them with respect. Um, and he impregnated a, a, a couple of them a few times. So obviously there was some type of arrangement going on. You know, he kept on coming back for more. And Elijah's like JFK, man. Weak, broken down looking. But when it comes to getting some pussy, they come alive all of a sudden, you know? <laughs> and that's what power does, man. Elijah said he wanted to spread his seed. That's what it was all about. But um, <clears throat> then they, the Nation of Islam spread the rumor that Malcolm was messed, wanted to deal with one of them. And Elijah was dealing with one. That Malcolm wanted, so Malcolm got jealous and all that kind of stuff. Well, if the girl had a baby, then obviously somebody like Malcolm would say, well, obviously she's fucking somebody else. I mean, see, these, these lies don't make any sense, man. So, <clears throat> you know, once it's found out, he told, uh, Elijah told Malcolm what the deal was. He's like, you got to spread your seed, man. I'm doing the will of Allah, man. Well, you know, it is what it is. But see, here's the thing. So Elijah didn't believe in his teachings as much as Malcolm. But I don't really think Malcolm, I don't really think Elijah really broke his teachings that much. I think there is a, a, a rule in the nation of Islam that, um, 
you have to stay married to the woman or something like that. And you have to go before the nation of Islam to get a divorce or something like that. So I think you had to stay true to, to, to your wife. But I look at that. So I guess in that sense, he broke the, the, the teachings. But I don't really think. But his main problem, his main part of guilt to me was messing with teenage girls at his age. Because you could have gotten somebody in their late 20s or early 30s and they could have still pumped out a few babies. But teenagers, that makes you a pedophile. No if ands, or buts about it. Um, <clears throat> if R. Kelly is a pedophile, Elijah Muhammad is a pedophile. So, to me, it could have been suppressed, but I think uh, Malcolm's big problem was he said he called some ministers up. And one of them being Farrakhan. Uh... And he just ran it over, ran it by them to see what their take on it was. See, that was his big mistake right there. Because, like Farrakhan said, he took it as uh, he's trying to start some shit on Elijah. And I hate to, hate to say it, but it could be regarded in that way. Because the truth be told... All he really had to do was address it to Elijah. And if Elijah said, man, fuck you, Malcolm, I'm doing what I'm doing. Then Malcolm X could have just said, OK, well, you know, I quit the nation of Islam. He could have just left it like that. But the fact that he <clears throat> went to a nigga like Farrakhan and Farrakhan's like, I'm rolling with Elijah. And, you know, why are you bothering me with this stuff? Then Farrakhan went and tattletale to other ministers, and then that they started turning turning uh, uh, these other ministers against uh, Malcolm X. So that is Malcolm's biggest mistake, in my opinion. See me, I always ask a ton of questions. If Wallace would have kept coming to me with that, I could I would have said, "Man, well, why are you bringing this shit to me, man?" That's what I would have asked him. Why are you bringing it to me? And if he would have said, well, because you're the man with the most power, I think people should know. I mean, everybody knew Wallace was hating on his father and the Nation of Islam ideology. So why would you even listen to him, even if it turned out to be true like it had been? That's another thing about Nation of Islam, Farrakhan and a lot of other guys. They kept on saying, no, the messenger didn't have all these outside kids. These, these kids were fake. And I don't know if those hoes were real, but he even has uh, one of those illegitimate sons he, he you know and sign that to try to say oh those were his wives he said wives well in the united states you're only legally allowed to marry one woman so there was only one woman that was his clara everything else were hoes so the fact that he has one of uh, elijah's alleged alleged sons on his staff that's supposed to make farrakhan some type of uh official guy See, that's what a lot of people outside the nation of Islam don't realize. When he does these stunts, he's not doing it for white people. He's not doing it for black people. He's doing it for the nation of Islam world to demonstrate, hey, don't follow the propaganda. Don't follow the naysayers. This is what it's all about. This is the real truth. You know, they put on these shows for them. Not for anybody who doesn't believe in the nation of Islam at all. So, Malcolm made the mistake of opening his mouth. Yeah, I could say it as careful as the man was. Yeah, he could be a little loose with the uh, with his lips. I think that comes from his thug days, where he figures he can, you know, do whatever he wants to do. But he was still highly disciplined outside of that. But his mistake is somebody's trying to. It's just like when you're in a job or in your personal life. <clears throat> when somebody comes out of left field with some craziness and they keep trying to, to tell you and try and get a reaction out of you, you got to wonder why do they keep bringing it to you? Because they're waiting for you to do something. It's just like when women, especially ghetto fire women, they say things like, uh, uh, Steve tried to uh, make a pass at me. And they're telling it to their man or somebody who's interested in them. 
And uh, he grabbed me. He, he, he grabbed my butt and all that kind of stuff. They're telling this guy to get a reaction out of him. You know, they're not telling him because, you know, they just want to tell him. Because if it was nothing, they would just say they wouldn't even say anything. But they're trying to get a reaction out of their boyfriend so that they can go kick Steve's ass or even kill Steve. That's what Wallace was trying to do with Malcolm X. Trying to get that reaction out of him. And the last time it hit. And Malcolm X fell for the bait. And uh, Louis Farrakhan went and blabbed every, to every minister around. And um, they started hating on Malcolm X. Then that's when they started saying um, Malcolm X just wants fame. He wants to head the nation of Islam. Even Elijah Muhammad himself said he feared Malcolm X going solo and starting up his own crew because he knew everybody would follow Malcolm X. He said he feared this. He said this. So all these other talks, hypocrite and all that kind of stuff, that's just what they put on them just because <clears throat> they needed some reason to hate on the guy, to set him up to kill him. And I believe at this time, once the white man got wind of this, for all, and some people in the nation of Islam speculate Wallace was working with the white man, but once the white man got wind of this, because they were watching these guys. Then they exacerbated the situation. But I think they set Malcolm X, Malcolm X up to be killed. They, I believe they ordered Malcolm X. I mean ordered Elijah Muhammad to kill Malcolm X. And I'm going to explain why. It's because once everything was set in motion. There was no turning back. And Malcolm X. Again on these recordings. He. I forgot who recorded the conversation. I don't know if it was X himself. I think it was the FBI. He begged Elijah to come back. He pleaded. He, he apologized in every way possible. So I, know that I think he's supposed to be playing that tonight. Because he just found, found the shit himself. Because I always make sure I bring that shit up. Because I like looking at the total totality of every damn thing. <clears throat> so he apologized in every which way possible to a man. Humbled himself to the fullest. And you can hear it in Elijah's voice that he wants to say, all right, my man, I'm going to let that slide. He, he wants to say it. You can tell it. But Elijah is like, uh, I, I can't accept that, brother. Uh, because the white man told him, hey, man, this is the great opportunity to kill Malcolm X. That's the whole purpose. Because there's, but, and there's another video on YouTube of the FBI coming to Malcolm X trying to get Malcolm X to turn coon on Elijah Muhammad. This is after they kicked his ass out. And Malcolm X wasn't falling for it. He still didn't sell Elijah Muhammad out. The man was more dedicated than Elijah Muhammad was. So what they did since Elijah Muhammad feared, you can't tell me that none of the orders came didn't come from Elijah Muhammad. Because even Malcolm X said, there's one man who can stop all this right now, and that's Elijah Muhammad. All he has to do is tell him to stop, and they stop. Which he was right. <clears throat> but they used all these excuses, you know, just to kill the man and... and what it was is, is they just feared because he was telling the truth on what he was doing. They just didn't want him to go and start up a new nation of Islam under the truth. So Malcolm X never turned hypocrite on Elijah Muhammad. Never. Talking about his extramarital affairs, that's not turning hypocrite. Turning hypocrite is if you claim to believe the teachings while still being in the nation of Islam, and not following the teachings or doing some other shit, then you turn hypocrite. Malcolm X never turned hypocrite on Elijah Muhammad. The nation of Islam coons, they need that as an excuse to say, okay, that's why he died. That's not why he got killed. He got killed and it's not the shit was already exposed before Malcolm X. Because obviously Wallace knew it because for all we know, Wallace could have been thinking 
damn, all these motherfucking kids, just like me, I got jerked off out of an inheritance because there were a lot of motherfuckers. <laughs> Wallace could have been thinking, damn, all the other kids coming around. My father's pretty old. He could die any day. Damn, if these guys make a claim, shit, how much am I going to get? That could have been his, his reasoning. You know, when people are parents are old and they look like they're about to die, people start thinking about that money. They start thinking ahead. And in the New York Times, you can find the article online. I think it's in 75 or 76, but you find it once you put in Elijah Muhammad's children fight over his state. And for people, because there's some definition of Islam factions who will say that Elijah didn't have all those kids and never cheated on his wife. But it's clear as day in the New York Times that Elijah Muhammad had 22 children, known children, they said. And they were all fighting to get a piece of that estate. So that kills anything. And we can't dismiss it by saying, oh, that's the white man saying that that's the court saying that and that's the people in question going to damn court trying to get a piece of that estate and that's what I mean by Wallace Muhammad was probably trying to break that shit down to make sure that everybody knew that these kids were illegit so that when it's time for estate settlements he can make sure he got he got his fair share and these things happen man they happen they happen to me too not in that way, of course, but, you know, people battle it out. You know, some people are greedier than others. So, again, they wanted to kick uh, Malcolm out. The Kennedy thing, and this is another example of Malcolm X, when he should have shut up. <laughs> I don't disagree with this part. He should have shut up. When the Kennedy got killed, <clears throat> Malcolm X just couldn't help but to say some... Extra stuff. Now, I guess in this sense, if you're trying to say that Nation of Islam, that Malcolm X was trying to play up to the cameras and love the fame, I guess that Kennedy situation is one instance where you can say that's valid. Because it, it is true that Elijah Muhammad told the ministers to not say any foul shit about JFK. <clears throat> that was clear. And the white man's media, here we go, white man's media, they asked uh, uh, Malcolm X, and he said, he, what he said was calm, wasn't really disrespectful, but he still spoke on it. He just should have said, you know, what white people say. That's an unfortunate, uh, that's an unfortunate situation. And left it at that. Just because reporters ask questions and they keep on asking doesn't mean that you have to answer. But that happened. They suspended them for 90 days. That was the excuse to set everything in motion. Everybody knows. I mean, come on. Even novices to this, they know all that stuff got set into motion to prepare to kill the man. So with that 90 day suspension, he was he was silenced for 90 days. That's what it was. He was silenced, which is, in effect, the suspension. And some people were saying <clears throat> uh, they didn't agree with that. Others did. But whatever the case was, he was silenced. He agreed to that. And then um, the man spoke out again in the media. And then he was suspended. So... Obviously, when Elijah did that, he did that to give a message to the white man. This is what I'm doing for you, white man. This is what I'm doing for you, boss. Uh, I'm suspending this guy. And after that, Malcolm X was marked for death. Now, Malcolm X said himself that <clears throat> he knew after the suspension was up, he wasn't reinstated. So he said, hey, listen, these guys clearly want me out. And it's clearly uh, deeper than just talking about the babies. So 
Malcolm X still shut his mouth for a while in regards to the uh, kids. He, he, I mean, he did drop some hints that hey, I got some stuff to tell, which he shouldn't have. And I think part of it is because <clears throat> Malcolm X, he kept on the media kept coming to him. He figured, OK, I could use the media as a form of protection from these guys. But after he was officially suspended and kicked out, never re reinstated. So that was, a, you know, you could say he was kicked out. He um, that's when he realized, OK, these people are fucking with me now. Then he started kind of talking junk. You could say that it, it all boils down to the fact that he got killed for talking junk, really, when it, when it comes down to it. Street stuff, nigga stuff, as they say. But he would talk on the media. He used them as a form of protection. Then he started trying to get with MLK, Orthodox Islam. Because he needed protection from these psychopaths. They're trying to kill him. You know, he got the various hints, uh, threats on the phone. I think he said he was driving to the airport one time and uh, people, they were about to kill him. And he avoided that. Then he stayed at a, mo a motel or hotel. Kept on getting the calls. I mean, yeah, keep in mind. He was getting threats and attempts before his house got firebombed. Then a week later, he, he gets assassinated. So they were steadily harassing the guy. He knew they were out to kill him. He says it himself. He said he trained them. He said, I know what they're going to do. They're killing me. I'm a dead man already. He knew that. He didn't say I'm a dead man because the government is going to kill me. He didn't say I'm a dead man because... Uh, I'm gonna be set up in the Audubon ballroom, and uh, Nation of Islam members are gonna come and get me, and they're gonna have blanks. <laughs> and then the CIA is really gonna kill me. He said, "They, the Nation of Islam, he specified who they were. They're coming to kill me. So it's no mystery. But the Nation of Islam, they wanted to be a mystery like the grass, you know. See, in JFK's case." They never actually caught anybody red-handed. The only man that got caught killing that weekend was Jack Ruby. But in the Nation of Islam's case, people got caught red-handed. But, <clears throat> yeah, they, he kept getting a lot of phone threats. Once the house got bombed, see, this is the thing. When you firebomb the house, I don't care if you owned it or not. That means you want to kill his family just to get him. Kill little babies, kill women and children. That's savage. Malcolm X's daughters. I don't know if they ever thought about this. But when the house got firebombed, they actually had an attempt on their lives from the Nation of Islam. People make a big deal out of uh, the Nation of Islam shooting him down in front of his daughters and his wife. But they actually tried to kill them all. And Farrakhan is a part of that. So that's even worse. So they, they, the Nation of Islam is actually lucky that um, <clears throat> they didn't succeed in killing them. And again, even with that incident, it goes to show that the police and the FBI were back in the nation of Islam. Some people might say, oh, it's because Malcolm X was uh, talking about white people and was provocative. Okay, yeah, suppose they wanted to get rid of Malcolm X. Yeah, okay. But it goes to show that the nation of Islam were coon agents because they can get away with all these things. I mean, come on. So, they keep harassing the guy. He realized the shit was really real when they firebombed the house. That's when he really realized it was real. Um, and he didn't have any clothing or nothing. He still made a speech after that. And he said, of course, they did it. But you see, after uh, the firebombings, after getting kicked out, his speeches, you know, he changed his demeanor. 
in his speeches. He was more, he, I don't want to say scared, but he wasn't as uh, provocative. Let's just, let's just say that. Um, but I will say, I think once his death was coming, I think just like the movie kind of uh, shows you and some other people allude to, I do think that Malcolm X is like, damn, these motherfuckers ain't going to stop. They're going to keep on. So I think he was like, you know what? Fuck it. If I got to go, I guess I got to go, man. There's no point in continuing to keep on running. See, now, if Malcolm X had more money and resources, he could have actually, you know, gone someplace else. Truth be told, I think he probably should have stayed over in Algeria or Egypt or somewhere. And really, he should have laid low. That's what I really think. I know people say, oh, yeah, but the CIA guys were following him around. But of course, they're going to follow you around when you're the type of person you are saying what you're saying and then saying the stuff about the international affairs and then you get over there. You know, they're going to wonder, OK, what is this guy trying to do? Is he going to try and provoke the people over here? Even though when he went, I think the <clears throat> that's when Nasser had taken over, I think. So before that, it was still an Anglo-Egyptian situation and the British still had it. But still, the uh, Ottomans still rule that Egypt by today anyways. But anyways... The empire is intact. White people still own a lot of the colonies that they had. They didn't want people like him going stirring around, stirring up trouble. Of course, my voice is going, <clears throat> so I'm going to wrap this up as soon as I can. But, um, yeah, so they were following the guy, but they didn't kill the guy. And I'm sure there's probably a whole, you know, with a whole lot of people, there's pictures, audio, video, everything. On a whole bunch of people that we haven't seen. You can go to the National Archives and see a whole lot of things, but you know, they call things national security. That's why they don't want to release some things. Farrakhan talking about release release the files. Why don't you release the files on your ass? But anyways, they say the same thing about the security. He didn't really want the people checked and all that kind of stuff. <clears throat> I probably would have been the same way after a while. Like, oh, shit, man, I guess they're coming. Fuck it. But me, truth be told, I would have probably sent Betty away and the kids. I would have strapped up like commando. And I would have gone on the offensive. <laughs> you know? Sometimes you got to go on the offensive. But, you know, he had all the kids and the wife and female children on top of that. If he had sons, I tell you, instead of daughters... Farrakhan would have been in trouble. And speaking of that, once his daughter tried to kill him, you know, I think I spoke on that before. I won't get into that. But if he had sons, Farrakhan would have been in trouble. See, Farrakhan has sons. <laughs> and those are his prime bodyguards. And he puts them as his prime bodyguards because, I mean, who else is going to try and save you more than your sons? And that's what Khalid Muhammad did with his son. But, you know, his son is another situation. But, they didn't check him. You see in the movie, you see how he was tense and all that kind of stuff because that those are the actual accounts of the people he was down with. And James Small, he's a, uh, a coon agent, uh, Freemason as well, by the way. He knew exactly when and where Clans 13X was killed. He was there. That should tell you something. He's still alive too, but he's a goddamn uh, Freemason. And they don't seem to mind. But anyways, as the movie alluded to, Malcolm X was stressed out. He knew he was about to go down, or, or the possibility was there. I'm sure he probably didn't know it was going down that day. But he knew it was probably going to be going down because, again, I think it was about a week prior to that, his house had been firebombed. I would have laid low, be honest with you. Obviously... Malcolm X and his uh, predicament, the, the white NYPD, they weren't going to help his ass out. And, of course, the Nation of Islam wasn't going to help his ass out. And the church, they weren't really trying to help his ass out because he wasn't, he's was, uh, one of them. <clears throat> but once the whole thing started, 
there's an audio recording of it. I always find it fascinating how there was an audio recording of the shooting, but not video film footage. But yet there's film footage of the immediate aftermath. I always find that pretty fascinating. So, <laughs> you know, you, you can make it out what you want to make of it. But they said a smoke bomb was thrown. Spike Lee did the research. Smoke, a smoke bomb was thrown in the back. Get your hand out my pocket, nigga. And then the guys come out with the, the shotgun in the nines and the forty fives. <clears throat> shotgun blast hit them. Then they lit them up after that. It's a miracle they didn't hit anybody else. But apparently they did target practicing. And I'm not trying to be funny when I say that. So, coons like Farrakhan and Dick Gregory, Sa Netter, and others, they want us to believe that Negroes said, get your hand out my pocket through a smoke bomb to have guys running to the stage with nothing but blanks in their uh, guns. Now, I could say this, if they have blanks in their guns to do a test run, fine, because as a matter of fact, I think they said they did some shit like that on prior occasions, you know? Matter of fact, in the press conference, they did a test run with the hand in my pocket thing. But Malcolm X should have been sharp, but I think he probably knew. And you can hear him say, hold on, hold on. Then they just start opening fire. But they want us to believe that Negroes from the Nation of Islam had blanks in their guns, went there to kill a man, but they had blanks in their guns. Who put the blanks in their, in their guns? I mean, did the FBI uh, put blanks in their guns while the guys took a shower and got dressed? Uh, I mean, how did this happen? Come on, you know what the hell happened. Um, so they want us to believe that the CIA white man was shooting from above. Shotgun blast wouldn't reach that far from the balcony and hit the man in the heart. Couldn't happen. Now, I do admit this, though. I would expect it to see more extensive damage to that heart area. <clears throat> but the shotgun was sawed off, though. So when it's sawed off, it's not as uh, on target, so to speak. But obviously the CIA, FBI, they didn't kill Malcolm X. I mean, Farrakhan is just trying to make a mystery out of it to get everything off of his ass. How many times has he stated that he's gone to the Jews to talk about his legacy? Why would you need to go to them to talk about your legacy unless they're not your, your master and commanders? Because obviously, if you keep doing what they tell you to do when you die... They're going to have a eulogy for Farrakhan on C-SPAN and CNN and call, just call them controversial. But then highlight the Million Man March, highlight <clears throat> uh, what he allegedly did for black people and all that kind of stuff. But they won't talk about the how he's supposed to be a Jew hater. They won't talk about that. Like I said, if people, especially Jews, if they really didn't like you, you would be dead. They didn't like Kennedy. Kennedy is dead. That's when you know that they don't like you. They didn't like his brother. His brother is dead. They didn't like Martin Luther King. Martin Luther King is dead. Medgar Evers is dead. Khalid Muhammad is dead. I mean, this is what happens when they don't like you. When you're a coon agent, you live because they need you out to be a coon agent. That's why. I mean, it's all pretty, uh, you know, pretty simple, but that's why the Nation of Islam and their various members and affiliates, that's why they keep on lying back and forth. That's why you don't listen to the lies. You just get down to the straight facts of the situation and get the lies out of there. And then you'll understand what the hell happened. Malcolm X essentially got killed for talking shit. I mean, on, on the face of it. On, beneath the surface, the white man ordered them 
to kill Malcolm X. So once he started talking shit, he was marked for death and, and there was no returning from it. Not because God ordained it, but because they had to do it at that point in time. You know, they, they just couldn't not do it. And Wallace Muhammad, he didn't seem to be terribly, terribly disturbed by Malcolm X dying. I think he probably got what he wanted. You know, ultimately, he destroyed the nation of Islam. Farrakhan destroyed the nation of Islam or, or his version of it. But Malcolm X, if he were to become the leader, let's see, he would have been the leader in 1975. Shit, 10 years, that's a long time. You never know what the hell could have been happening in between that, those times, if they would have liked them or not. But some people feared that Malcolm X was just so just and so straight that all the thievery and stuff that was going on in the nation of Islam, he would have put an end to it. He would have made sure that everybody adhered to the teachings. That's another thing people say. Because what do you got? The uh, black pe black mafia in Philly. You see, they were acting in, in the capacity of gangsters. <laughs> Zebra killings, people might say, oh, okay, well, that's a part of a nation of Islam that killed white people. But those people are just people that acted on their own because in every group you got some people that are just mentally unstable. But that that's not the order for a nation of Islam. They love the white man. Look at my video on the nation of Islam that proves that everything they do is for the love of the white man and for the hate of the black man. And I think Seti must have seen that video because he put that in, the, in his video and I had never heard him talk about that before. You could give me the credit, Seti. I mean... I give you the credit on the research I did on yours with the Freemason stuff. I got that from you and put two and two together. So it's all right, man. <laughs> but with that, I mean, I can't believe it. No water here. My voice is feeling crazy. Throat is feeling crazy. But I knocked out, what, over two, almost two and a half hours worth. And if I forget anything, I'll just do a follow up. So with that, it should be clear to anybody who is about truth and not propaganda from coons like Farrakhan. Malcolm X never turned hypocrite on Elijah Muhammad. Never. And I challenge anybody in the comment section or anywhere to tell me where Malcolm X turned hypocrite on Elijah. Talking shit about Elijah and the babies he made that's not turning hypocrite. Elijah did those things. People can't speak on it. Yeah, probably shouldn't have been made public. But how come you people aren't on, even half as hard on Wallace as you are on Malcolm X? How come you didn't call for Wallace's assassination? How come you didn't call for Wallace's head to roll? How come Wallace got voted leader of the nation of Islam after Elijah passed? If Wallace was that bad. But Malcolm X only went off of what Wallace told him. So how come Malcolm X is the hypocrite who had to die, but Wallace gets appointed leader of the nation of Islam? See, these are the things you coons just can't answer. So I know I'm going to get called a whole bunch of names and stuff, but never mind the name calling. Why don't you come with the fat calling? Especially this last bit I just uh, dropped. How come nobody checked Wallace? And don't tell me it's just because he was the minister's, uh, I mean, he was uh, Elijah's son. That's the case. That's a tricky bastard then. If you ask me, you shouldn't have fallen for his, uh, his tricks. But he became Nation of Islam leader. So <laughs> it is what it is. Malcolm X was a just man. And unfortunately... When you're just and you're not full of shit like Farrakhan and, and easy, easy to sell out. They get you quick, quick and early, man. Farrakhan, unfortunately, is a coon. And he'd rather live until he can't walk anymore. 
I personally, I'm not even sure if I even want to live that damn long, to be honest with you, when you're old and weak. I don't know if I want to do that. Might get to see a lot more Super Bowls and stuff, but <laughs> you're limited in what you can do in life. That's just me. <laughs>